Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music both new and old. And today, I'm here to tell you about the new Zero One album called Octagon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this video has been a long time coming. This album actually came out way back in April, and I didn't even notice it until like a few months later when I was looking into buying this CD of his first album here. And it took me a long time for me to finally get around to reviewing this, but I really want to highlight this guy and discuss his music. So, Zero One. This is the alias for Kevin Dooley, and he is a down-tempo dub artist very much in the same mold as Sounds from the Ground and Magic Sound Fabric. I very frequently put him in the same group as those two and think of them almost like a threesome, as uh, since I first got into all of them basically at the exact same time in high school. This guy is one of the few artists left who still releases stuff on the label where SFTG used to be most active, Waveform Records, and uh, he has an interesting take on this sound that is much simpler and more electronic heavy than some of his contemporaries, but still no less compelling or easily recognizable from a distance. His album covers and weird stylization of song titles where they're all lowercase but all the O's are capitalized additionally grabbed my interest and drew me in. And it turns out his music lived up to his excellent packaging. I've always considered him one of my favorite artists in this particular genre, and I've felt he's extremely underrated. So may as well go down my thoughts on his previous discography so far. I skipped the remix album, but whatever. <laughs> Just eight tracks of excellent, groovy, funky, catchy down-tempo numbers with lots of great bass lines and memorable vocal samples. All killer, no filler. I don't think he ever topped this one personally, but yes, amazing album. Trying to go for the same blend as the debut, but maybe a bit more subtle and spacier. Also less consistent, unfortunately. Doesn't get back up to the same level as the debut for me until the last four tracks or so. Also worth noting that I recognized a few stock loops he used in a couple of uh, quick choice moments earlier on. For instance, there's an ocarina sample on the track Search that also appears on my own track Cotangent. But somehow his use of the loops didn't bug me all that much. He uses them in the same way he uses other samples from non-stock sources, just sprinkled on for quick moments of extra flavor and not built into the core groove. Probably also helps that I've heard this album enough that it stopped becoming distracting, so yeah, still a good album, just not quite great. This is the only album of his that was not released on Waveform Records, instead released on Magic Sound Fabric's label Spiralite. And that guy made the album cover for him too, which is pretty cool. Anyways, this album is more the same, but pretty solid too. Uh, not as tight as his debut, but no real big weak points either. Plenty of excellent highlights like Transfer, Robots, Transformation, Reality, Dream World, and others. Really good stuff. This album marks a bit of a shift in sound into some colder, more sparse and metallic tones, and occasionally also some jazzier tones. Still pretty great. And uh, the last track, OK, is one of my favorites from him ever. <laughs> and this one makes it turn into some rougher and harsher and louder tones. In comparison with his usual stuff, this maybe even feels like it might be influenced by industrial music a little bit. Was a little weirded out by this one at the time, but still pretty cool stuff. And this album made my list of best albums from 2015. And despite having not really listened to it since it dropped, I think I would still stand by its placement there somewhere. Builds on the same kinds of sounds as his last album, a lot of themes of aliens and space and the future with those vocal samples. Pretty cool stuff. Maybe gets a bit on the long side at 16 tracks and can be kind of samey. Probably could have edited this down some, but eh, I didn't get sick of the sound either. Which brings us to here. Man, this stuff brought back some memories. So alright, this guy does follow a bit of a formula throughout all his albums and tracks, but he's managed to keep that formula fresh and remain enjoyable for me this whole time. Each of his albums has gotten longer than the previous one, too. This latest album has 18 tracks. Well, okay, 16. The last two are alternate mixes of other tracks, but I kinda had a feeling I knew what to expect going into this. Although the Bandcamp description mentions that he was going to be using some new editing technique called vocal sequencing, which I had a feeling wouldn't really be that groundbreaking, but at all the same I figured I would at least enjoy it and feel like it would be new for him. So how does Octagon fare? 
Okay, yeah, it may not be super out of the box in general terms, but it certainly is out of the box by his standards. I don't know what I was expecting to hear when I first put this on, but chopped up samples of what sounds like a, like a gospel choir was not it. <laughs> this album sets itself apart from any of his previous work with its use of the vocals, which are not only way more upfront than usual, but they're also often built directly into the core groove of the track themselves. Though despite that, I don't think I heard a single word of English either, or at least a complete word or an intelligible one. <laughs> the vocals are there, but it's not like they're forming, you know, lyrics or anything. But yeah, I thought this album was pretty cool. I thought it was enjoyable pretty much all the way through. There's a lot of the usual synth grooves that are as well executed as always, perhaps with even more intensity and urgency than usual. Always nice to get a change of pace, and it's one of his better albums in a while. In terms of individual tracks, I admittedly don't have a ton to say. A lot of these tracks kind of follow the standard formula that all Zero One tracks seem to follow, at least structurally. These tracks all develop initial hooks and grooves, and continually evolve into new sounds as they go on, and eventually find a way to return back to where they started. And while I think I'd be describing most of these tracks with the same adjectives and descriptors, they're all pretty nice. Well, maybe as a bit of a rough start. The opener Halo seems to be most concerned with being off-putting to longtime fans of his, with all those chopped up gospel choruses as mentioned above still mixing in with a relatively hard-hitting and foot-tapping dance groove. It's a good track, has some neat major key melodies, but not a huge personal favorite. The second track, Beam, that's a lot better. Similarly upfront vocal snippets chopped up with a fairly lighthearted beat that still has lots of intense synth licks all over the place. The next two tracks though have a, maybe a vocal snippet or two that I wasn't really keen on and felt a bit too upfront for their own good. See the chopped up hook at the very beginning of Echo? I found that a bit annoying at first, although it did grow on me with repeat listens. It's one of the more memorable parts of this album. And at one point in the track Psychometric, there's these weird growling noises that don't really feel like they fit and don't sound all that good either. And by the way, there is an alternate version of this track subtitled The Way Forest Mix that's tacked on at the end of the album. And as far as I could tell, these two versions are almost completely identical, except the remix is like 30 seconds longer. And the remix also has this one little moment where the tempo just slows down and picks back up for two seconds. It's almost like he has like a radio edit and an original version, except the original version is the radio edit, and I, I don't know why you need both of these. <laughs> it's not like these are ever gonna see radio play. That said, once we get past Psychometric, there's a solid stretch of like a whole bunch of highlights in a row. I really like the video game-like quality of Casio, the Spongle-esque, maybe Middle Eastern uh, vocal snippets of Circuit, the deep and spacey grooves of Flow, and the almost disco or EDM-ish up-tempo feel of the title track. And aside from those, other highlights include Isotope with its fast-speaking snippets that almost sound like if the singer from Fortet's Morningside tried to rap her performance. Just as melodic, but maybe with a deeper voice and a lot faster. Also the strange mumbling snippets on scats that are probably in English but it's hard to understand what's being said. That's a really good track. And those snippets are not the most interesting thing about it. It just had a really good groove to it, but whatever. And also the track Sign had a lot of cool piano licks all over it that I really liked. All those tracks were personal favorites. And there are several tracks on here that even border on feeling epic like Pulse, or Surge, or maybe Horizon 4 as well. And for what it's worth, not all of these tracks had particularly prominent vocals. Some of the ones I already mentioned, like Surge, also the track Sid, uh, that one was more about the synths, well, probably would have fit pretty well on his Sonar album. I do think the album has maybe a bit of an underwhelming ending with Zombeat, a fun enough more down-tempo track that is just as playful as anything else on here, but wouldn't stick out much, if not for being immediately followed up by an alternate mix which is a lot louder and more up-tempo and dance-centric, only has the same title because it has the same main melody. <laughs> At least here I understand its inclusion. Probably even prefer that alternate mix a little. But yeah, that's about all I have in the way of specifics for Octagon. This album may not exactly be rock solid across the board or deliver interesting discussion material for every track, but every track on here, even the lower points, at least had something to enjoy. 
usually some kind of playful, quirky, danceable groove that couldn't be mistaken for the work of any other artists that's usually uh, pretty addicting and has plenty of interesting details along the way. Also, you'd think that at 18 tracks this album would feel overstuffed, and given how I did say Signals, which had 16 tracks, did in fact feel like it could have used some editing, I would have expected this to be similar, but no, not really. The album's only a little over an hour, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. I'm not gonna say that Octagon is one of my favorite albums of the year, but it's definitely a fun album that shows an artist I've been a fan of for years continuing to deliver consistent material while still pushing himself into new territory, and yeah, it's pretty solid. I enjoyed the whole thing. It's worth checking out. I think I'm overall feeling a 7.5 out of 10. But of course, it is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. So leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. If you want to add yourself to that list or make me review something, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time. Okay.